All right, now I wanna talk about the R22 emergency uh, procedure section of the POH section three. It's uh, crucial to familiarize yourself with these procedures to ensure that you're prepared for any situation that may arise during flight. Let's dive right in. In the emergency procedures, the first page, like you've seen before, uh, talks about all of the different uh, procedures that are contained within this uh, manual. Some things that I want to talk about really quickly. We have two definitions, land immediately and land as soon as practical. Okay, land immediately, land on the nearest clear area where a safe normal landing can be performed, be prepared to enter auto rotation. Land as soon as practical, landing site is at pilot's discretion based on the nature or problem and available landing areas. Flight beyond nearest airport is not recommended, so keep that in mind. Now, let's talk about power failures. A power failure may be caused by either an engine or drive system failure, and it will usually be indicated by the low RPM horn. An engine failure may be indicated by a change in the noise level, nose left yaw, oil pressure light, or decrease in engine RPM. A drive system failure, however, may be indicated by an unusual noise or vibration, nose right or left yaw, decreasing rotor RPM while the engine RPM is increasing. In case of a power failure, immediately lower the collective and enter auto rotation. And then there's some stuff here about the aft side click. The reason why I just want to read that to you is because you may be asked a question on the check ride, like what are the indications of a drive system failure? And you'll have to memorize this or understand, oh, it's a nose right or left yaw. It's a vibration, noise, um, decrease in road RPM or engine increasing RPM, you know, that type of thing. So three power failure uh, scenarios power failure uh, power failure between eight feet and 500 and then below eight feet so we do one thing we do another thing and this here we do a third thing so i'm not going to read all of these but you can uh understand that uh anytime we are dealing with emergency procedures in helicopters especially we don't have the time to uh you know do a few memory items and then pull out the checklist and and look and to see uh you know are, are we doing everything that we need to do uh, you have to memorize these 100% in your mind. So be prepared for uh, not only for the oral exam, uh, but for the practical, the flying uh, portion of the exam, but also for life. You need to know exactly what you need to do in the steps that you need to do it. So these are absolutely memory items uh, that are absolutely important to memorize, okay? And power failure between eight feet and 500 feet, same thing. Uh, you need to memorize these. Power for failure between, below eight feet, uh, AGL. Uh, basically, it's just allow the helicopter to settle and then raise the collective to uh, uh, just before landing the cushion. Uh, you will be asked about the maximum glide distance configuration here. You'll need to know it. Uh, just 75 knots, 90% RPM, uh, four to one glide ratio, 1500 uh, feet per nautical mile. Um, and then uh, down below 500 feet, you have to, increase your minimum rpm to 97 percent okay so if you're up let's say at you know six thousand feet or something like that and you're auto rotating down when you get down to like you know 500 feet agl or thereabouts you now can no longer do the 90 percent. now the other thing i want to point out at 90 percent, when does the low rpm warning horn and come on right 97 percent or below so at 90 percent, uh you're going to be hearing the horn and the light will be on and it's going to be the entire time so just be aware of that uh you will be practicing this uh with your instructor at some point in time so uh that that is always something that i like to point out uh air restart procedure <laughs> fun side story uh, a couple of flight instructors took a helicopter way be even before i got to where i was working before and they actually performed an air restart um 100 would not recommend uh they were chastised and you know everything was fine afterwards but it is possible. Uh, what happened was, you know, one instructor entered an auto and the other one said, oh, I wonder if we can restart because they had enough altitude and they were hubris and whatnot. So anyways, don't don't do it. But if you wanted to do it, uh, air restart procedure again in that scenario, if you're up at six thousand feet, you, you're in the max glide. I wouldn't be in the max glide distance configuration and trying to restart the uh, the helicopter. I would pick one or the other, like focus on one task, maintain the aurora RPMs, you know, whatever. Use your best judgment. That's why you're getting paid the big bucks. But air restart procedure, you may be orally asked about what is the air restart procedure, then you have to specify mixture full rich primer throttle, you know, and then actuate starter with the 
left hand. Do not attempt restart if engine malfunction is suspected. So if you hear a catastrophic boom or the oil light comes on and then next thing you know, you, you know, it sounds bad. Don't, don't even bother trying to restart. Okay, we have a, a couple of uh, water landing uh, scenarios. So uh, you may be asked these on the check ride, especially if you're flying out, like let's say over Chesapeake Bay or um, you know Lake Michigan, like any of the kind of larger bodies of water. Like even um, I was flying in Seattle area and flying over Puget Sound and stuff. We had to to memorize these emergency water landing uh, uh, items as well. So know these, love these, uh, learn these. If you're in the middle of the country. The examiner may or may not ask, but you know, always, always, always be prepared. That way, I mean, even not just for the the check ride, it's like for your life. Like, you know, yeah, you get checked out and you, you're flying in the middle of the country, but next thing you know, you're out over you know Hawaii or something like that. So you need to know these uh, 100%. Uh, loss of tail rotor thrust in uh, forward flight, and then loss of tail rotor thrust in hover. Um, Understand that um, you need to enter auto rotation, maintain 70 knots if practical, select a landing slight, uh, roll throttle off into over travel and perform auto rotation, okay? When a suitable landing site is not available, the vertical stabilizers may permit limited controlled flight as a low power setting and air speeds above 70 knots. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm kind of a bigger guy. And even as you know, a flight instructor back when I could fit in an R22, um, I would be flying with like a student or something like that. And if we're trying to maintain a low power setting and a greater than 70 knots uh, forward airspeed, it's gonna be, it's gonna be tough. If you're by yourself, that's, you know, that's understandable, but you use your judgment. If you can extend it uh, to a better landing site, then, you know, try it. Um, all right, loss of tail rotor thrust in a hover. Um, we just talked about, you know, uh, roll throttle into the over travel spring, allow aircraft to settle and then raise collective before touchdown. Now here is if there is a headset audio failure, uh, land as soon as practical. So you don't need to like slam it down, but you know, go to the nearest airport type of thing. Uh, but understand that if the headset fails, you won't have the low RPM horn, um, through the audio system. So it, it may not, uh, may not be able to be heard. So keep a vigilant eye on the, on the engine RPMs. Okay. Now we have engine uh, fire during start or on the ground, uh, and then also engine fire in flight and electrical fire in flight. Okay, all of these need to be memorized. Uh, all of them need to, you, you have to write them on your heart. You have to know these, you will be asked about these. Now, uh, I want to speak to electrical fire and flight. There's, there may be a scenario that the examiner's like, you, you know, you and your examiner are flying along, whatever. And he's like, I smell an electrical fire, a simulated electrical fire. What do we do? And so you simulate battery and alternator switches off. I mean, you, if he allows you to turn them off, then great. If he doesn't, then I would just say simulated battery switch, simulated alternator switch, open cabin vents. I mean, you can simulate that or actually do it. Uh, land immediately. So what does that mean? We are, uh, land immediately, like basically enter auto rotation, power on landing if you have the power, that type of thing. But get down, get get down quick, okay? Then simulated fuel mixture off, fuel valve off, and so on and so forth, right? Now understand um, with the low RPM warning system and the governor are inoperative with a battery and alternator switches both off. So he may ask you if the battery switches off and the alternator switches off for an electrical fire, are you gonna have the low RPM warning system or what systems may be inoperative when you turn the battery switch in the alternator switch off? So uh, th those may be questions on the ground or in the flight. So understand that, know that, love that, learn that. Uh, what he may do is what, what happened to me or what I've heard uh, happen is uh, simulated uh, engine, uh, sorry, electrical fire and flight. The, the student or the applicant uh, enters auto rotation. And then as they're uh, going down, the, the examiner says, okay, you know, I, I see that you can, you can hit that spot. I see that it's not like really, you know, all right, uh, simulated emergency is over. Or I've also heard the examiner be like, hey, let's go ahead and yeah, I want to see this guy put it down. And I want to see that he will simulate the fuel mixture and i want to see the you know uh rotor brake you know all of that stuff so use your judgment clear communication between you and the examiner uh but understand you will be asked about these in uh your check ride or during your check ride but you also need to know these more importantly for your life right you know if you're flying your friends and family around you're not gonna be able to ask them right <laughs>
All right, so let's talk about the tachometer failure. Now, if there's rotor and engine tach malfunctions in flight, use remaining tach to monitor the rotor RPM. So meaning if one of your rotor tach, you know, or engine tach fails, uh, you can use the other one to, to monitor. And understand, you know, with the governor on, it's gonna do a pretty good job of keeping it up at, you know, 104% or whatever. Um, if it's not clear, if both fail or, or whatever, um, use the governor uh but watch it and, and and keep an eye on it um understand that they're also on separate circuit breakers right so a special circuit allows the battery to supply the power to the tax with the battery and alternator switches both off and i bring that up because back over here in electrical fire he may ask you you know with the the, the battery and alternator switches off uh will you have a governor well, over here it says, yes, you will, because it's a, you know, a, to the hot battery bus for lack of a better term. Uh, and then it talks about governor failure. If engine RPM governor malfunctions, grip the throttle firmly, override the governor, and then switch the governor off, complete the flight using manual throttle control. So now we're getting into the caution, the warning lights, and uh, basically two things you need to know for everything. What does it indicate? What do we do? What does it indicate? What do we do? So oil light, what does it indicate? What do we do? Main rotor temp light, what does it indicate? What do we do? Main rotor chip light, what does it indicate? What do we do? Tail rotor chip light, what does it indicate? What do we do? You get the idea. I'm, I'm gonna beat this dead horse until you can tell me what every single light indicates and, and what do you, you know, what do you do? Uh, low fuel light, what does it indicate? What does it do? Clutch light, what does it indicate? What do we do? If it's greater uh, than 10 seconds, uh, pull the clutch circuit breaker. Less than 10 seconds, the, the clutch light will come on and off. You'll see that as you're flying around, it's normal. However, what does it indicate? What do we do? Okay, alternator, what does it indicate? What do we do? Starter, what does it indicate? What do we do? Low RPM, governor, carbon monoxide, if installed. Brake, full throttle, if installed. Um, what does it indicate? What do we do for all of the, the caution warning lights? So uh, at some point in time, the examiner throughout the flight uh, will point to a light and say, okay, this engine oil light what does that indicate if that comes on what do we do about it uh the caution the low rpm light what is it you know you get the idea all right uh now well, let's talk about audio alerts we have a couple of them potentially uh low rpm horn um what does that indicate what is it what do we do you know all of that stuff uh and then audio alerts if you have the high rpm warble uh this is installed on later aircraft so you may or may not have it uh what does it indicate what do we need to do Okay. And then a little bit about the uh, low G uh, conditions and um, uncommanded uh, pitch roll yaw resulting in turbulence and uh, inadvertent encounter with moderate or severe extreme uh, or extreme turbulence. He may ask you about that or she. So those are the emergency procedures. Understand um, that the emergency procedures are designed to keep you safe in the event of an emergency familiarize yourself with them review them regularly to ensure that you're prepared understand that not only are you doing it for to pass the check ride yeah that's the short-term goal but the long-term goal is to be a safe pilot and not get dead right so uh how can we best do that we have to memorize every single emergency procedure so uh, I do that by the method of, of rote memorization in flashcards. I would highly encourage everyone to make a whole bunch of flashcards about not only the limitations section, but also the emergency procedures section and some other stuff a little bit later on. Stay safe out there, but know them, like them, love them, write them on your heart, sleep with them under your pillow, uh, place them on your forehead to try and absorb the information. You get the idea. This is very important. You need to know this stuff, okay? Thanks for watching. If you want to learn more about helicopters, I have a free getting started course down below. I also have a course on how to pay for flight school. And my main course is literally teaching people how to get their private license. I'd love to help you out. We'll see you in the next video.